Hello everyone, today I will finish up on my crazy theories for this game. Are you orange video channel orange? Yes, well, sir. luckily, I have a deal of a lifetime. You just won one mi 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 orange coins. All you have to do is click this totally not suspicious link. Nice try, Scabling. What? Unfortunately for you, NordVPN, the sponsor of this video, detects fishy links and will automatically block them, protecting me from your malicious scam. What? You know what else it can do? Try being able to play games and watch Join YouTube videos blocked in your country. Take no. that, scammer man. You too can not only safely browse the internet, support this channel, but also get a massive discount on a two-year subscription with a bonus month free. If you purchase and then decide that it's not for you, there's a risk-free 30-day period in which you can get your money back. That's nordvpn.com slash orange. Thank you to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. Starting with the secret backstory behind Wix. There's not much official info on Wix since his rework has yet to come out, but despite that, there is so much mystery around this guy. Let's start with how he even entered the constant in the first place. Most characters get tricked by Max before being taken away in a portal never to be seen again. You can see their hatred for him in the quotes for a Maxwell statue. In single player, the majority of characters will even say these words directly to his face. All but one character has a negative reaction to Maxwell. Wix is the only character in the game who does not hate Maxwell at all. In fact, if you examine him directly, Wix says he is an unknown. He has no idea who Maxwell is. But how is this possible? After all, if Wix made a deal with Maxwell like the other characters only to get tricked and kidnapped, surely he would remember his face. Every survivor knows who Maxwell is, and yet Wix doesn't. This shouldn't be possible, unless Maxwell wasn't responsible for Wix entering the constant. Now this might sound a bit outlandish, but I do have more evidence for this. When Wix examines the Maxwell statue, he says, High levels of evil detection. This sounds bad, but you have to think about how Wix sees the world. His moral compass is completely broken and anything bad is now good and anything good is now terrible. Look at how he describes other evil things. I am the root of all evil. Now the outside matches the inside. At least there's still a bit of evil in him. That's the line he says when he sees Maxwell burning things. Pretty obvious he enjoys being evil and other people being evil. When Maxwell burns his base down, that is perfectly fine to him. Wix calling Maxwell evil is more of a compliment than anything. I do not believe Wix was taken into the constant by Maxwell, hence why he doesn't hate him. I think Wix entered the constant through a means that didn't involve Maxwell at all, which explains how he didn't know who he was. He was one of the few characters in the game that was not tricked by Maxwell, but by someone else. You. That is Wix's examined for a hologram of Wagstaff. Weirdly hostile, right? Well, that is not close to the end of his hatred for the staticky man. One of his tools. I should just leave it. Why would I help him? He can come retrieve it himself. I could bring it to him. Or not. I mean, come on. When he looks at restrained static, all he can think of is, maybe he'll electrocute himself. He's wishing that Wagstaff dies to one of his experiments. I get the feeling that he might dislike him a bit. Wix didn't hate Maxwell nearly as much as he hates Wagstaff, so why is that? You could argue that Wix doesn't want to help Wagstaff because he knows he's evil, but how does he know he's evil? Every other character is completely fine with helping Wagstaff with his experiments, so why isn't Wix? Even if he did know Wagstaff was up to no good, wouldn't that be what Wix wants? If he likes Maxwell for burning things down, then why does he hate Wagstaff for doing the same thing? It wouldn't make sense to act like this, unless Wagstaff had betrayed Wix at some point in the past. When Wix examines a lunar siphonator, he says, Don't trust him, sister. Don't ever trust him. And this is where my theory on how Wix entered the constant comes in. Wagstaff likely sent his own creation into the world for some experimentation or maybe to gather a few materials. We've seen Wagstaff create portals to the constant in the past, so it's not unreasonable to think that he could have sent Wix through one. This would explain how Wagstaff was able to own a spider from the constant in the real world. It's really easy to gather something from another dimension if you have a robot helping you to get them. At some point, Wix must have realized that he was basically being scammed and stops helping Wagstaff. This would explain why out of any evil character, Wix hates Wagstaff 
them most and also reveals how he would have entered the constant without knowing who Maxwell is. You might think the idea of Wagstaff inventing Wix is stupid, but it is all but confirmed. Take a look at Wagstaff's other inventions, the PR-76 radio, the gramophone ML-77, a robot by the name of WX-78 fits in really well here, doesn't it? And there's more, when Wagstaff examines a night boat, he says, Amazing! I ran into many difficulties waterproofing my robot. Guess what? This robot that Wagstaff built has some difficulties with waterproofing as Wix will take damage in the rain. If you're still not convinced that Wagstaff created Wix, this is his line when he sees Wix on the Nightmare Throne. Is that? But it couldn't be. I don't think I have to say any more. As I'm writing this, the Wix short has yet to come out, so it's possible that I am wrong. But that is my current theory for how Wix entered the constant and why he hates Wagstaff so much. Speaking of Wagstaff, let's talk about him. I mentioned him quite a bit in my other videos, but I never really fully explained who he was or why he's important. As confirmed by an old forum post, Wagstaff is a factory owner of the factory that produces the Voxola radio. The the radio is a Voxola PR76, manufactured in 1919 by the Voxola Company of Sydney, Ohio. The radio offered revolutionary sound and reception quality for the time, and was promoted by an intense national marketing campaign. Very few units were actually produced, because the factory was destroyed in a fire only days after production began. Voxola founder Robert Wagstaff went missing on the night of the fire, and the company declared bankruptcy soon thereafter. Funnily enough, this is the same radio that Maxwell appears to in every short. This used to be all we knew about Wagstaff back in the day. This guy, he uh, exists, he makes radio, and then he died in a fire at the end. Then he was added to single player in 2019, described as a mysterious inventor who finds himself exactly where he wanted to be. If you played Wagstaff, you might notice something odd about him. Whenever his health gets low, his character starts getting all staticky and his voice sounds really muffled. The commonly accepted explanation for this is that Wagstaff isn't actually actually in the constant and is just projecting himself there from Earth. With this knowledge, the Winona rework video makes Winona look like a complete idiot as she is basically trying to save a hologram from a portal. To further support this theory, you can tell from the way Wagstaff acts that he's not afraid of anything. None of the monsters of the constant scare him and instead interest him. This would make sense if you knew that no matter what, these beings can't actually hurt you. When Wagstaff gets attacked by Charlie, he says, I've been bitten. Fascinating. No one would act in this way unless you knew that you weren't in any danger. Wagstaff traveled to the constant by creating a hologram of himself. This way you can be both in the real world and in the constant at the same time even if Wix doesn't want to help him anymore. His intentions for using this power are most likely evil. Not only does Wix hint at him doing something awful in the past, but he abuses the survivors into getting the most powerful energy for him. He literally just appears, steals the power of God, than leaves. Zero explanation. He also must have met Maxwell at some point since Maxwell recognizes Wagstaff as the grainy transmission. Perhaps Maxwell knows him from the same event that Wix hates him for, but that's just a theory. It's also possible that Maxwell simply knows Wagstaff because he kept trying to abuse and what possibly the steal his power from the constant. Especially since Wagstaff is incredibly insistent to talk with him. The most likely reason Wagstaff knows him is because Maxwell literally stole some of his inventions. No, seriously, he just stole his machinery and didn't give credit. Even if Wagstaff doesn't necessarily know who Maxwell is, Maxwell clearly knows him as not only does he recognize him from somewhere, but has been stealing his inventions and using them to kidnap people. Maxwell exposed. Now it's time to move on to the character that apparently knows everyone. Wanda has existed for an obscenely large amount of time. Just search the word timeline on her quote page and look at how many different timelines she's experienced in the constant alone. She must have seen what would happen to the characters before and therefore tries warning them of something before forgetting what she was going to be warning them of. She's likely experienced every event to the end due to her non-stop time travel. This includes current game events like Wax 
next half's plan. I should have known it would happen like this again. Again means that Wanda's experienced enough timelines to know how the one we're currently in is going to end. However, she also seems completely unable to do anything about it, forgetting what she wanted to say when trying to warn someone. Honestly, don't think too hard about Wanda. Clea has a surprising amount of dumb jokes to her game and a time traveler who simultaneously knows everything and nothing is perfectly on brand for them. I think the developers mostly focused on making a cool character with unique gameplay rather than one with a 400 page backstory. This short can literally be described in a few seconds. Wanda cheat that. Shadow is like, no. Wanda break clock. Now you're going to the constant. That's kind of how most of the DLC characters are. They usually have some sort of background story but nothing too groundbreaking. Again, this is likely because the developers focus on how the characters play more than how interesting their lore is. At most, you might get a moral lesson by analyzing their short. Speaking of which, Warthox is one of the three playable characters who originate from the constant. He didn't enter through Maxwell, he just exists here. You could argue that he entered through a portal willingly, but that's about as deep as it goes. He's not really connected to anyone per se, more like a character who everyone meets when they enter the constant. He used to be a young imp who would steal people's stuff with Krampus. At one point they robbed Wilson's handbat and Wes's balloons. The most important part of this short is the fact that it's the only place where you can hear Wes speak. Take a listen. You can hear Wes sigh in this short. However, one day Krampus decides to steal a child beefalo. Luckily, Wartox is not a Discord admin, so he fights Krampus, frees the beefalo, and wins Gold Star. Just kidding, Krampus tries to attack Wartox, but then Wartox steals his soul and Krampus dies. By stealing Krampus' soul, he is just as bad as him and gets corrupted. Why? Why is the justice system in the constant so horrible? He was clearly defending himself, but the world is like... No. One of the most interesting parts of this video is the voice acting. You might notice that this guy through the woods. sounds exactly the same as Maxwell in the inevitable short. Once upon a time, several strangers were stranded. This would imply that the entire story we just listened to was told to us by Maxwell himself. This is also the same voice actor who tells the story of Weber's short. There was once a young boy who would not hurt a fly. These animations are literally just Maxwell telling a story around the campfire. It makes sense too. Of course, Maxwell's gonna be the one who knows all about your personal life since he's the one who observed you so much in the first place. Now, if you're like me, this being Maxwell's canonical voice is a huge deal because now you can sentence mix him to say whatever you want. What? Attack me. I'm not entirely sure if Clay pays attention to whose voice is whose, so this could all be a coincidence. Another bit about Wartox is that he has the ability to travel between worlds. These worlds include video games. This is how Wartox was able to bring the terrarium to Don't Starve. If you think about it, Wartox can just teleport to any fictional world and steal whatever <coughs> overpowered weapons they have. How is he not the strongest character in this game? Speaking of shorts, this is probably the part where I should talk about the Wolfgang animation. In this video, we we learn that Wolfgang is not as strong as he is made out to be. It's the usual story, the crowd hates him for being a fraud, so Wolfgang wishes to be stronger, and then Maxwell appears. You know how it goes. The interesting part is that Wolfgang seems to be the one who saved Maxwell from the train crash. The shadows give Wolfgang muscles, allowing him to lift a train, preventing Maxwell from dying. Without Wolfgang, the entire timeline would have never happened, and you wouldn't have to deal with stupid mechanics and dumb characters. What? the hell Wolfgang? After Wolfgang loses his strength, it's implied that he followed Maxwell, likely so he could give him back the strength that he lost during the train crash. And we all know how that turned out for him. It's kind of funny to imagine Wolfgang stalking Maxwell all across the country, only to get trapped in hell. But hey, he did get his wish. He does become stronger in the constant. Some people call him overpowered. Wormwood's about as boring as his quotes. All the short reveals is that Wormwood is from the mood, and that he has no friends. You'd think that there be something more, but there isn't. Well, okay. If Wormwood is from the moon, the same thing that has been confirmed to be God, doesn't that mean he's been sent by the moon and secretly has greater motivations? 
It is interesting to think about, especially since Wormwood was added two years before the moon was revealed to be one of them. It's entirely possible Wormwood is the only character who's actually siding with the light, placing him on the opposite side of the metaphorical chessboard. That's basically it though. Not everyone is an extremely intense backstory and Wormwood is proof of that. Wicker Bomb is kinda like Wix in the sense that we won't know anything about her until her rework and animated short comes out. However, what we can do is guess what it will be about. Winona is actually connected to most of the story before, and in one of the images you can see a news report of a burned down library. A librarian who mysteriously disappeared and a destroyed library with someone in it who disappeared mysteriously. It's hard to say that the two aren't connected. I don't know what kind of deal we're made with Maxwell, but I'm sure it will be revealed in the update which is supposed to come out in 2022. Look, I'll even predict the month. It's gonna be... June. June is the wicker bottom update month. Anyways, someone asked me what Chester is, so here's your explanation because I don't think most people fully comprehend what this fluffy guy is. You see the eye bone? The thing you need to make Chester follow you. Yeah, well, that eye is his eye, and he's only following it so that Chester could see himself. He doesn't want to follow you because you're holding a bone. Chester follows you because you're holding his eye, and without it, he would not be able to see. This is terrifying. You are actually abusing this little box creature by stealing his eyes and then forcing him to follow you. What a horrible person you are. Walter's short is interesting because it tells us more about Woody than it does Walter. In Woody's short, we learn... Absolutely nothing. But in Walter's short, we can see him explore Woody's old cabin. Apparently, the werebeaver is a myth in this part of Canada, and it was so popular that Walter goes to investigate it. If you think about it, the only way this myth could have been created is through sightings of the werebeaver. And the only way the werebeaver could have existed in the real world is if Woody was cursed before he ever entered the constant. It's also possible someone saw Woody in the dark, but didn't really see him well, and then the human mind did the rest, but you know. Outside the cabin, Woody's axe Lucy can be seen sitting on a log, meaning whoever Woody has in the constant is a fake. I mean, when you craft an axe as Woody, it literally turns into Lucy, so yeah, this man is delusional. Walter enters the constant by, and I'm not joking, slightly adjusting the radio in Woody's cabin. Apparently, in this universe, all it takes to enter the constant is to listen to some ragtime music. Wait, wait, oh shit, no, no.